Hello, first graders. I'm excited to talk to you guys today, um, and I'm glad to be back in my art room where I can come back to our normal projects. Um, we have been talking a lot about shapes. Um, we did our shape pizzas. We did our shape robots. We've learned that shapes are all around us. We also learned that there are geometric shapes. And the other half of that is organic shapes. So we usually group shapes in art class into two groups. Geometric, which we learned about last week, right? Our squares, our circles, our triangles. Those are shapes that we can make by using usually dots, straight lines. They usually have corners. Um, but organic shapes are a little different. Organic shapes do not usually have straight lines. They do not usually have corners. Um, and they're not usually connected by, um, like I said, by straight lines. They're usually a little bit more unusual. They're usually a little bit more curvy. So you guys are probably sitting there wondering, um, Mrs. Bergman, what is an example of an organic shape then? Well, this is an example of an organic shape. It's not really a circle, it's not really a square, it's not really anything at all, right? It is its own unique shape. It doesn't have straight lines, it doesn't really have corners. Um, it might look like a paint splot or something that you've seen before because a paint splot is a great example of an organic shape. Not all shapes around us in the world can be grouped into our basic shapes of squares, circles, triangles, ovals. Um, some shapes are unusual and they don't fit um, in those basic geometric shapes. They're a little bit more unique. One of my favorite shapes um, is a cactus. I love cactus. Um, cacti, I guess. Um, I love them. And if you look at a cacti, it is an organic shape, right? It is its own unique shape. It's not a square. It's not a circle. It's not a rectangle. It has some straight lines. It has some curved lines, right? Um, but it is its own shape. It is, um, it is an organic shape. So this is my super cool cactus. Um, that is a good example of an organic shape. Another great example of an organic shape that you may have seen in nature is leaves, right? Leaves are great examples. This is my attempt at an oak leaf. Um, leaves are great examples of organic shapes, right? They're not really circles. They're not really squares. They're not triangles. They are their own unique shape. Um, even this shape of leaf, sometimes we call that um, like a squished oval, but it's, it's more of an organic shape, right? It's a unique shape. Um, so those are some examples of organic shapes. Things like, or patterns, like camouflage. So I actually have a camouflage mask here that I'm going to show you. Um, you can see the different shapes that make up the colors are great examples of organic shapes, right? If camouflage was made out of squares or circles, it wouldn't work as camouflage, right? It has to be those unique shapes that we find in nature. Um, straight lines don't really work for camouflage. If it looked like this and was plaid, right, it would stand out too much. Um, this would be examples of geometric shapes, right? Geometric patterns. But camouflage is a great example of organic shapes. All those different colors are organic shapes. So today what we're going to do is you're just going to need to find a blank piece of paper. And I like to do kind of a combination of black and white. So the white you may not be able to see on the camera, which is fine, um, but the black you will be able to see. If you don't want to use black and white, you do not have to. You can use any color crayon. You do have to use crayons for this project. Markers and colored pencils do not work as well. If you have oil pastels, which I know is kind of an unusual art supply, most of you probably do not have that at home. But if you do, um, you can definitely use it for this project. It'll work even better than a crayon. Um, but we at school here used crayons for this project and it worked out great. So what I'm going to do with my white crayon 
is I'm actually going to draw some organic lines. Now, I know you can't really see this right now, um, and that's okay, but maybe you can see what my hand is doing. It is looping and twirling and whirling through my page, and I'll show you actually on my whiteboard what I did. So I drew lines that were curvy, whirly, swirly lines. I didn't make squares, I didn't make rectangles, I didn't have any straight lines. Um, and I'm not just scribbling, right? This is not the same as scribbling. Um, I am just doing a long flowing organic line and that's gonna be the white part. And then over top with the black, I'm going to draw some organic shapes. So I'm just gonna do some made up organic shapes. And you can do this opposite too, like if you wanna do um, organic lines with one color and organic shapes with the other color, that's fine. If you wanted to do like white and then black or black and then white, um, that is just fine. You do not have to like follow exactly what I'm doing here. You can just do organic lines. Some of my students did that today um, and that looks really cool as well. You do not have to do organic shapes. I just thought for this one, I would do the shapes over top. Then all you're going to do is take your watercolors. So one thing that we have learned with working with watercolors this year is that crayon and watercolors don't mix. They like to stay separate. So it's pretty fun because you can paint right over top of crayon and the crayon will still show through even white so you couldn't see my white before but hopefully as I paint here yep there it is my white crayon is starting to appear which is why I like to do those swirly lines in the background because they're kind of a fun surprise once I start painting but I think it would also look good the other way. If I had done these black organic shapes with the white paint or white crayon and then did a black swirly line over top, I think that would um, turn out pretty cool as well. So any way you paint this is completely fine. You do not have to paint it like I'm painting it. Um, if you want to blend colors, mix colors, I always, always, always love your creativity. This project is just as much about um, painting and learning how to draw organic lines as much as it is about exploring paint. I loved hearing my students today talk about how, oh, when I paint this color with this color, look at what I made. Um, and looking at the water and how their water was changing color. Today is also about having fun and exploring um, your art supplies too. So if you don't have one of these watercolor trays yet, or if you don't have watercolors at home, um, please let me know. Even remote kids have a watercolor tray just like this one with your name on it um, that was bought for you. So if you've not come to pick that up in the office yet, um, please let me know and I will drop that in the primary center office for you to come and get, um, especially if you're planning on being remote until the end of the school year, because this will not be the last time that we paint. Um, in fact, we have a really cool project coming up. I think it's next week and we will need paint for that one as well. We're going to be doing more and more watercolors as we're getting better and better with them. Um, so if you have not picked yours up yet, go ahead and do that so that you guys can paint with me at home because it's so important. Watercolors are probably my favorite art supply. Um, I do watercolor painting a lot at home. Um, I do a lot of like illustrations and my son who is two, he also loves, he has his own watercolor trays um, of paint and he loves to watercolor paint so that's something that we enjoy doing together. Um, so if you don't have yours yet, please get it because, oh man, I just love painting with watercolors. And it's a good thing to learn how to do. We're going to be doing it more and more every year. As you guys get older, it's a great thing to get better and better at. It's super washable, so it's not very messy, um, which I know parents like. My mom, when I was growing up, did not really care for messes very much. Um, and so watercolors were a good option. 
because they're very washable. They're not very messy. Notice I'm not getting paint everywhere. Um, then you can go ahead and paint the background too. I'm always like excited to find where those white lines are going to appear. I always think that's fun. Um, but I will go ahead and end the video here and continue painting on my own so that you guys don't have to sit here and watch me finish my picture. Uh, but I think you guys get the idea. Hopefully by now you have understood the difference between geometric and organic line and organic shapes. Um, especially in art, right? They're important because sometimes we use geometric shapes like when we're making things like robots, but sometimes we need organic shapes when we're making things found in nature, right? Like leaves. Um, not everything is a straight line, right? Not everything can be grouped into squares, circles, triangles, right? Something, some objects around us in our world um, are not like that, right? Some of them are organic. Some of them have curvy lines like leaves do, right? All right, so I'm going to keep painting and I'm going to show you guys one of my other examples that I have not finished either. Um, but this one I did an organic line in the background and then I did a black organic line in the front and then I painted over the whole thing. So there's lots of different ways that you guys can do this, but the goal um, is for you guys to have fun painting, of course, and also to be practicing those organic lines and organic shapes. So make sure that your drawing and your painting doesn't have straight lines. Try and avoid having any corners. Um, try and avoid scribbling, right? Be thinking about what shapes you're making, what lines you're making. Um, and then have fun painting. And of course, of course, take a picture, show me what you got.